The Narendra Modi government completes 100 days in office today. Despite being voted in with a resounding majority, the government has taken a slow and steady approach to reforms. Here's a quick look at the 100 days scorecard. I, Narendra Damodar Das Modi, Ishwar ki sapak leta hoon ki. Narendra Modi swept into power with a historic mandate and optimism that bordered on euphoria. Right away, the new Prime Minister began to temper runaway expectations. Some of that bitter medicine came in the form of stiff fiscal discipline by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. The silver lining was that to meet the fiscal target, disinvestment would return in a big way. Even as the Prime Minister chose his Independence Day address to map out his social agenda, the economy began to show signs of turning around. As the government completes its first 100 days, GDP growth has rebounded to the highest in over two years, giving both the Finance Minister and the Prime Minister the opportunity to reiterate their campaign slogan of better days ahead. My response to them would be that India is changing for the better. So let's not, uh, let's see silver linings rather than uh, any gloom in situation to come. Hundred days to discuss the Prime Minister's big hits and misses in the first hundred days since he took over. I'm joined by a power pack panel, Anil Ahuja, CEO at IP Plus Advisors, Ravi Upal, MD and CEO at GSPL. I'll also be joined by Shubhda Rao of Yes Bank and Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Member of Parliament at Rajya Sabha. How would you characterize Modi's 100 days? Uh, would you say that this government has been high on intent and on action? Harsha, thanks. Um, I'll tell you, I was driving in here and I was uh, listening to Chariots of Fire on the, on the thing and I was listening to the, to the music and, and admiring the fact that if the orchestra is well conducted, mm. it can produce absolutely beautiful music. And that's what I was hoping for when this government came to power. Mm. The first thing I'll tell you that is important is that everybody seems to be singing from the Modi hymn book. Mm. There are no detractors. Mm. And he's basically silenced uh, most people who were detractors. So mm. whether it is uh, the government in terms of the politicians, the bureaucrats, uh, I think everybody is, uh, is following at least one storyline, which is, which is very positive. Mm. Second, I think, is that the e economic agenda seems to have a very strong uh, focus in everything that is being said or done, mm. uh, whether it is Prakash Javadekar giving approvals, whether it is uh, the government making a suggestion to the Supreme Court that, you know, 46 of the mines should not be cancelled, uh, whether it is uh, the international relations and the last five days of Narendra Modi in, in Japan where uh, clearly the investment was very high on the agenda. I think all of this clearly indicates that the economic agenda is, is front and center in terms of the, uh, in terms of everybody's thought process. Mm. Uh, right. The finance minister's 4.1% mm. is, I think, another big one for me because I'm sitting here and saying, this was an easy one. He could have made it 4.3, 4.5, and people would have said, yeah, somebody else created the mess. I'm helping clean it up. Mm. But he didn't. He said 4.1. Now, why would you set yourself up for failure? Mm. My guess is he's, he's set his, himself up a very, very tough target, mm. which I agree looks, at least from here, very difficult to meet. Uh, but there has to be an intent to make that happen. I think he could have done more in terms of things like GST and laid down a more, sure. I would say, a more concrete agenda, but 
we have to wait and see what what comes out of there sure i'll get to that in just a moment Anil. let me get also get uh, ravi in ravi you Sorry. know uh, uh, you know if you, from a corporate india standpoint there have been problems uh, would you say that uh, this government has at least mitigated some of those problems well you know that uh, 100 days is too short a time to pass a judgment on mm. the performance of the government mm. I mean, this government, when they took office, they got a huge baggage of problems uh, from the previous uh, government. Mm. So they are trying to fix that. At the same time, they are trying to uh, put in concrete action their own vision. Mm. And, and they seem to be adhering as far as possible to the uh, kind of agenda that they announced before they uh, came into the power. Mm. Uh, I think the good thing about this, they have created a good measure, uh, a feel-good factor. Mm. The sentiment in the market is good. Uh, and the, you know, and the people feeling more confidence in government than they ever used to do. Remember the last two years, uh, 11, 12, and 12, 12, 13, and 13, 14, they were a complete wash off, mm. and there was no investment. Uh, you know, but that cannot be the, you know, said to be the case now. Uh, and uh, if you look at the budget that uh, the current government has presented. Uh, plus, uh, Mr. Modi's articulation of various policy measures, mm. I think they all seem to be in harmony with each other. Mm. Uh, Mr. Modi seems to be leading from the front, and he seems to be leading by example. Mm. And uh, what, what is you know, very different this time is the leader is determined to introduce discipline mm. and probity in every, every walk of life. Mm. Uh, there, once again, he makes an example of himself. Sure. And, uh, and it's not confined to a particular sector. Mm. It is right across every sector. If you recall the budget speech made by the railway minister or by the finance minister, right. they were so comprehensive mm. that didn't spare any sector uh, you know, from from the coverage and within their agenda. Sure, I think that 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 is what makes it relevant for everybody in in the in the industry and in the economy. Sure, Anil, just one point. You know, we're talking at a time when markets are trading at all-time highs. From a market standpoint, uh, has this government delivered? Has this government at least set the roadmap that you're going to see earnings grow uh, substantially at least like 12 to 18 months from now? You know, I think uh, I think on the market front, uh, Draghi has delivered more than uh, than our own government, so mm. that's fine. Mm. Uh, but I think there's a huge risk on uh, in place. Uh, the Indian environment looks like there is hope for a positive move, so everybody is just piling in. Mm. And if you look at the hard numbers, the amount of money flowing in is not that large. Mm. I mean, a recent number still showed about 14 billion had come into the country mm. on the equity front. But 14 billion in the equity front is not a large number. We've been getting 20, 22 for the last five years, so there's mm. no big deal. Mm. Uh, so I think, I think the global environment has a lot to do with the way the Indian um, markets have behaved. I also believe that the Indian markets are way ahead of themselves in terms of valuations and any logical metrics. Mm. Rajiv Chandrasekhar also joins in on this conversation. Rajiv, great having you on the show. Uh, we were talking about what the government has done. Uh, what, to your mind, has worked and what's not worked for you? Um, no, Harsha, I think uh, uh, on the back of the last five, seven years, uh, the government has demonstrated a couple of things. One is, of course, that they are determined to govern. And uh, more than any single headline, I think the fact that this is a hard-working government and, uh, versus what was a hardly working government in the past, that is in itself uh, giving you plenty of headroom for optimism and projections of growth. Uh, number one. Number two, I think the fact that they are so focused on investments and bringing in investment and you know, the whole uh, trip to Japan and the commitment of $35 billion over the next five years. Mm. I think those are all essentially the building blocks that are being put into place mm. uh, for uh, what hope, hopefully will be many years of uh, sustainable growth. Mm. So I, I don't want to point out uh, to any one single element of government, government action, mm. but from sitting in Delhi, I can see the difference in the last 100 days versus the last four years. Mm of clear, firm, decisive, and, and very importantly, very hardworking, um, you know, nose to the, um, the wheel kind of a government. Ravi, you know, I want to put that point that Rajiv made. Uh, it's about administrative reforms. It's about, you know, incre incre improving operational efficiency of governance. Uh, as corporate engaging with government, are you seeing difference on the ground? 
Oh, yes, indeed. I think, you know, that you feel that when you go to the, the various government agencies, you feel people are a lot more energized. They are taking ownership. Uh, they are responsive. I see a marked difference compared to what it was uh, some months ago. Mm. So, I, I, you know, basically is that the Prime Minister himself is uh, leading the entire effort. Uh, he is uh, making sure that uh, he has effective surveillance on the functioning of different departments, and he is uh, keeping a you know a regular tab on their performance and the issues. And many ministries, you know, where you have economic ministries in particular, mm. I think he's uh, personally connected with them. Mm. Uh, ministry like coal and power. Uh, environment, because these are some of the ministries which uh, had a lot of issues created in the during the previous regime. Sure. So I think the Prime Minister himself is uh, very much connected with the progress on various issues in these ministries. Sure. Shubhda Rao, VS Bank also joins in on this conversation. Shubhda, you know, we were talking at a time, as I was just telling Anil, markets are at all-time high, GDP numbers have uh, are looking good. Uh, has the Modi magic worked for, for the macro economy, or do you think this is too early to call? Well, I think uh, I would give a more balanced view. Yeah. One, definitely adrenaline has been injected into the economy. Yeah. Uh, there's a spring in the step yeah. in terms of decision making, in terms of policy focus. Yeah. And that itself is a great support yeah. in terms of growth uh, triggers. Yeah. And of course, the 5.7, you can say, is also a, a lagged impact of all the earlier measures taken. But very importantly, I think the momentum is becoming very important to be tracked from here on and I see a lot of traction in that growth momentum going forward. Mm. Uh, definitely uh, the uh, willingness to take difficult decisions is coming on board quickly. Mm. Uh, as you were earlier pointing out, the operational e efficiency, uh, you know, it's a more pragmatic government. Uh, refraining from big bang reforms, uh, you are trying to create an absorptive capacity in the economy to be able to absorb those big reforms later on. Mm. I think right from the beginning point of action of, uh, you know, inculcating confidence back into bureaucracy mm. to take decisions uh, uh, with a focused approach on, on a more small step kind of uh, unified, uh, uh, you know, platform to be able to allow the private players to come on board, take decisions, uh, participate in, in uh, whatever, you know, consultative process of investments. I think all of this is coming very actively on board. Sure. And that's very visible at this point. Anil, Anil for, from a, somebody from a foreign investor standpoint, somebody who's looking at, into India, you know, ideas like disbanding the planning commission, uh, looking at government expenditure fairly closely, uh, what's the message that sends out? Does it say that, look, this is a new government that looks at new systems and processes for running India? You know, the Planning Commission has been a hot potato for a while. So I think disbanding it is not such a crisis in a foreign investor's mind. I think what would be more important is to see what replaces it and what form that takes. Mm. Uh, so I think that is that is where it is. Now, on the government expenditure side, I think the the, the single biggest number is the disinvestment number, which everybody is waiting to see. Mm. And I'm assuming that, uh, you know, the data that is coming out and the way the markets are performing, they will try and move on that, on that agenda. Mm. If they can make that 4.1 number mm. uh, in terms of the overall deficit, I think they will be in a very, very good place. Rajiv, what would you like to see this government doing in the next 100 days? Uh, what are those things that, that the, you know, we've seen the low-hanging fruit. Uh, what would you like to see this government push through? Harsha, I, I, I firmly believe that the first 100 days was about getting used to and setting the right you know, body language in terms of the government and government governance action. I think the next 100 days are going to be about the form and shape of the new set of policies and public policies that they will unveil uh, that will then have the, uh, the impact on bringing in investments and boosting investor confidence. So I think we will now need to see the real meat on the bone, which is uh, what are the policies for, uh, for example, the urban reforms and investments in the urban sector? What are the policies in the road sector and the transportation sector? And, and, and I can keep going on and on and on. But the key thing now is uh, to move beyond, uh, move to the next step, which is uh, here is a government that means action, it means, uh, means what it uh, says, but now let's put the innovation, the change, the creativity in terms of policy making 
out there for people to see and uh, for investors to get confident about. Because remember, this government came in with a mandate for change. And there is really very little uh, to justify a status quoist approach to policy making. Now, that non status quoist of breaking the mold approach to policy making is what we will need to see in the next 100 days. Rajiv, maybe I'll start with you on this one. You know, some of the misses on this government. Uh, insurance has not been pushed through, uh, the FDI and insurance that is. GST has been a long-standing uh, uh, concern that corporate India has had. Do you think this government will be able to f fix that in the, in, the next, in the next 100 days? Uh, is, it, is it a prime concern? No, insurance, uh, as you know, Harsha, the, the bill was introduced in Parliament and uh, select, the bill has now been referred to a select committee of Parliament of which I am a member. Mm. I, I expect uh, the select committee to give its report before the next session of Parliament. Mm. So I think that is pretty much in the pipeline. Uh, what form and shape it will take, obviously, the, the committee will decide. Um, in terms of, um, in terms of, you know, I, I really don't think in 100 days there was uh, uh, that kind of an opportunity to push through some of these uh, deeper reforms. I think the government has signaled that it is intending to do it. Mm. Now, to establish that will all get done in the first 100 days, uh, you know, you rem remember, we just had one session of parliament. Mm. And that session of parliament was uh, a session of parliament that was a busy session with a full legislative agenda. Mm. So I think the real uh, focus should be on the next session, which is the winter session. Mm where many of these bills that uh, relate to reforms will be tabled, debated, and hopefully passed. Mm. Ravi Upal, you know, in the past you've spoken quite a bit about uh, the importance of GST and how this will be, that will be a game changer. Uh, are you hopeful that this government will be able to push it through? I think the, the, the government definitely has expressed their intent to go for the GST, but there are issues between the centre and state with regard to revenue sharing. Mm. I think the government, uh, to my understanding, has already made considerable progress on the GST. I, I would like to believe that before we get into the next financial year, uh, GST should be in place. I think there's one thing that I'd like to mention here, that uh, the service sector in this country, which is the most dominating sector, contributes more than 50% of GDP, is almost in the auto mode. I think if we just provide an enabling environment, it can go on on its own. But the sectors which are really need government help are basically manufacturing and uh, the agriculture sector. The manufacturing sector has been constantly sort of uh, shrinking. Uh, the Modi government, uh, of course, has uh, assured all support for manufacturing sector and seems to be receiving the you know, prime focus. But it's not it's a simply a matter of expressing a wish. Uh, you know, it's a question of taking concrete steps. So, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, regulation within the sector. There's a cascade of taxes. So therefore, once you have the GST in place, it will go a long way to help the manufacturing sector. Sure. I think this is something which is really required. Sure. Second is about uh, the uh, you know, investments. You know, some of these sectors, the, the, the parts in the sector are very investment intensive. Sure. But government after government has been promising that they will put in place uh, you know, the long-term funding. And sure. that funding has not been placed and that has definitely affected the growth of the sector. Sure. For example, government now says they want India to become world's second largest producer of steel. Right. So it's not a matter of just expressing a wish. We need to take concrete steps to take that uh, thing forward. Sure. Uh, Anil, you know, they say a job well begun is a job half done. Uh, well, we all agree that, it's, that this government has begun well. But uh, when are we go likely to see earnings growth? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what matters, doesn't it? Well, I guess, uh, you know, that is what matters. And I think earnings growth is uh, is lagging right now. And frankly, I don't know where it's going to come from or when it's going to come because a lot of the issues that the government inherited or the country inherited are still there. And we still have stubborn inflation. Rainfall still, you know, whatever, 15 17% shortfall. We have, uh, you know, the banking system is uh, has its own issues in terms of the amount of uh, non-performing assets and how that gets recapitalized remains a big issue. And, you know, there, there are a large number of issues in terms of getting manufacturing started and growing and before that can start contributing in a big way. You know, that is, so I think earnings growth is anything more than 15, 17% expectation for the next 24 months on an annual basis is, uh, is aggressive. But I want to just touch upon one thing that I think the government 
should have done or could have done more vociferously uh, in the past 100 days. I think we have been uh, plagued with the issue of, of re retrospective cancellation of approvals. And I'm talking about a much broader thing. This is not about the tax. This is not about the foreign investor. This is about local business and investment environment. Mm. I think we need to make it clear that once anybody from the government of India gives an approval, that approval cannot be rescinded because that is an approval. Mm. Uh, because on the basis of that approval, various things happen. People make investments. People go ahead and do things. Mm. And, and to go and cancel that approval, I mean, you can go and take it up with the guy who gave the approval. You can shoot the guy. That's not the problem. The problem here is that things happen on the basis of that approval, mm. which become highly complicated because other people who have acted in good faith on the basis of an approval which exists from the government of India sure. get penalized quite dramatically. Mm. Rajiv, you want to come in on that? You know, we've recently seen the situation as far as coal mine licenses are concerned. No, uh, no, no, no. Go ahead. I, I, no, no, I, I understand where this is coming from, but unfortunately, I, I don't think it's that simple. Uh, I mean, the, the problem with uh, making an argument that investors make investments in good faith, mm. uh, there is a counter argument that there are investors who actually uh, get the deal in, 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 in bad faith uh, or using bad faith. So this is this is a tricky situation. I ex I accept the argument that many uh, of many good investors essentially have been burnt mm. by the policy, uh, not paralysis, but the the whole issue of questioning public policy over the last four or five years. Mm. But I think the the focus ought to be really about creating more transparency in government and governance and making sure these things are done right. Mm. Uh, now. You know what happens to those investors, like in telecom and in coal, who've made those investments and are burnt. Uh, I don't know the answer for that, and I think uh, there may be some other way of solving that. Mm. But to say that a government decision cannot be questioned and should not be questioned once it is done, that is, I think, uh, going against the entire wind of uh, uh, the entire, you know, in a sense, the need to be challenging government decision. Uh, till we are sure that everything is done very transparently. Sure. So I, I would I would leave it at that. I mean, there is there's some merit in what's being said, but I also think there is a counterpoint that's as strong. Sure. I'm, I'm going to, you know, get into but the last... Harsha, last I just want to just add one more point about sure. the 100 days. Sure. One of the... One, sure. Yeah. One, one, of the, one of the key things that the government has done is, you know, it's, in, it's inherited a public sector banking system that's been completely shot right. to hell. I mean, and, and therefore, the finance minister in parliament has said on a number of occasions, and it has been followed up by the RBI, that all this concentration of risk and these uh, too big to fail kind of scenarios that have been built up over the last five, seven years are going to be dismantled. Sure. And there is clearly a path and a, and a set of uh, cues mm. to reforming the public sector banking system. Sure. So that's a very big uh, step that the government has taken in the last 100 days. Sure. Well, one last round of questioning, gentlemen, and uh, Shubhda, I'll probably start with you. Uh, we've seen what this government has done in the, in the first 100. What to your mind are the risks and red flags? Remember, this is India's strongest, politically the strongest government that we've seen in the last 30 years. What do you think needs to be done and what do you think it should stay away from? I think the first and foremost thing that needs to get done is now uh, ensure that whatever the focus they have outlined and defined mm. actually gets implemented. Let's not forget that the last government suffered from exactly that lacunae, mm. that intent was there but implementation wasn't there. Mm. While the blueprint is now getting created with fresh ideas, uh, that needs to get implemented over the next three to six months. That's mm. very important. Mm. And the first and foremost, I would say, is rekindling investment across board. Mm. I think that's going to help, be it in infrastructure, be it in manufacturing, or even putting some uh, appetite of uh, investment into agriculture. I think these are the three key things that the government really needs to put its focus on. Get jobs back will help demand revive mm. on a sustainable basis, and in turn, which will help top line grow and earnings grow. So I think it's going to be a self-fulfilling virtuous circle that they need to create right now. Mm. Uh, 
on creditable terms, they need to kickstart disinvestment because there is still a question mark on fiscal consolidation. We don't want to see a repeat of compromise on quality of expenditure. So it's extremely imperative that the government sorts out its revenue streams upfront quickly so that there is lesser of stress as you move towards the latter part of the year. So fiscal math, credible math, quality of fiscal adjustment, rekindling investments over the next three months. The way we talk to the bigger players definitely see a change in the ground. Mm. But it is the mid-segment which is yet to see mm. a lot of the positive policy environment enablers. And that's going to take time, into, you're saying. And that is what will take time. And that is where the government really needs mm. to ensure that it is getting more broad-based. Mm. Because that's, that in turn is going to help right. uh, 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 a wider and sustainable uh, platform. Ravi, what's, what needs to be done and what, what are your red flags? Well, you know that if you look at the ground situation right now, the, the investment process still hasn't started. Mm. I think people are gaining confidence. I'm talking about investors both from domestic as well as from overseas. Mm. Uh, they're getting confident, but they still haven't come to a point that they believe mm. that uh, there's the, the full credibility of the government. Mm. They think the government is talking a lot of high fire things and, and the government uh, has all the good intent. Uh, but in the next 90 days to six months time, they're going to see how much gets delivered. Mm. I think uh, the point mentioned earlier, I would like to emphasize once again, uh, government's credibility is extremely important. Mm. One other thing which has been worrying the investors in the past is the consistency and the continuity of the government policy. There have been a lot of reverses. And some of the government decisions conveyed, they cannot be reversed. It's a, it's a decision given by a sovereign government, mm. no matter what. Mm. If there has to be any review process, it has to take place before the government's decision becomes a law or becomes a definite decision to an investor. Mm. So I think this is something which really needs to be reinstated. Sure. You know, there's so much, there is so much a din right now that some of the things done by the government, you know, that haven't really found the kind of response uh, that, that could have been there. Uh, that's number one. The second is that uh, one sub-sector that government hasn't touched so far, mm. which has a profound impact for the manufacturing sector, is about the labor reforms. Right. I know that they're trying some of the labor you know, reforms in a state like Rajasthan, but right. I think this needs to be escalated because that is the one which is going to give much of a lee room, a leeway which is required by the manufacturing sector. Otherwise, it will only end up as a statement of intent. Sure. Anil, $13 billion of FI money has come in. There is no problem of investment on that front. September has always been traditionally a good month, I'm told. Uh, will the party continue, Correct. you would think? Well, I think I think for now it is definitely continuing, mm. and uh, you know just to come back to something, I, I fully agree with what Rajiv mentioned. But mm. I was talking more about the public market investor. Mm. So the public market investor can get hurt quite badly when things change dramatically. Sure. Uh, but again, you know, the, the the three things on my agenda, which I think is is very well known to the government, so there is no crisis there. Mm. I think GST, land, and labor; these mm. three things need to get sorted out. And, uh, you know, just simplify the process of doing business because, you know, all my friends who, who run manufacturing businesses still complain bitterly about the number of hoops they have to, to jump through uh, to get normal things done, which people in the other parts of the world take, for, take mm -hmm. for granted. Rajiv, last word with you. As I said, this is India's strongest government. Uh, what, what, would you, what would you like to see? No, I'd like to see in the next 100 days two things. One is uh, real form and shape to this whole issue of governance reforms. Mm. We really need to see substance to the claim that there will be a new kind of government. Mm. So that's point one. And the second is, like I said, we need to get the investment cycle move going, and we need in the next 100 days big investment announcements, uh, whether they are public, private, foreign. Um, uh, I, I'm quite, you know, they're all fungible. I think investment, 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 and governance reform, governance reform, governance reform.